Hi guys, welcome back to our tutorial series. Um, we're doing a Christmas advent series, so if you haven't had a chance to look at some of our other videos, please check them out. I'm here today with Amanda, she's from Amanda's Glass, and um, we're here to do a sort of tutorial on how to make these absolutely beautiful snowflake decorations. Um, Amanda's based down near Callington um, and she does do workshops so I'll include some more details in the link and we'll also talk a little bit more about that in the end. Um, but Amanda, what are we going to be doing today? Well we're going to have a go at making one of these um, snowflakes. I do them in clear but also I quite like a bit of colour because I like colour and I like the icy effect of the blues. So this is what I'm going to demonstrate because it'll be easier to see I think. So we're going to use um, clear glass, an aqua glass and more of a turquoise glass which should give a nice effect. All of this glass is a glass called Tecta which is um, three millimetres thick, very commonly available. Uh, I'll just give a plug for where I get all my glass from Warm Glass in Bristol or just outside of Bristol, excellent company um, and they sell everything you need to fuse glass, absolutely everything. It comes from America originally, most of the glass, um, from the Bullseye Company in Portland, Oregon. And it is specifically um, produced uh, for fusing, so you get reliable results every time. Um, so as I said, we're going to use three millimetre glass um, to make these. And it's going to go up to a full fuse. So it's going to go up to 804 degrees in the kiln um, to be fused to give that lovely rounded soft effect. So we're going to start off with the clear glass. That's going to form the the arms of the snowflake. So we want six arms at five centimetres each. These mats are brilliant for cutting on because um, they give a nice base, but also you've got all your measurements there. Um, you can ready. just get these in a normal craft store. Yeah, normal, yeah. Craft, normal craft uh, yeah. cutting mats, but they're just great. So this is an oil cutter. It's got a little bit of oil in it, which helps lubricate the tiny little um, wheel at the bottom. And that's what will create the score to break our glass. Um, so we just need a metal ruler. So the arms are um, one centimetre thick and then I'm going to cut them down to five centimetres in length. So line it up, pressing down, one nice score. You can listen for that lovely noise. If you get a zuzz, you know it's a good cut. And then use the tile cutters to cut it and then we can do the other cuts freehand. So we want six of those. So one, two, three, four. That's not quite long enough, but I've got two there ready. So we've got our six. And what size do you, do you cut these to? So that's one centimetre wide, yeah. five centimetres long, and you'll need Perfect. six of those. We're going to make it on this paper. Okay. Now it looks and behaves like normal paper, but it's a special paper called shelf paper, which goes in the kiln. Yeah and it yep. stops anything sticking to the um, kiln shelf. Oh, brilliant, okay. But it's ideal for building your work on because then when you lift it up, it doesn't go all over the floor. Yeah. <laughs> so, pit, normal PVA glue to stick it down. Okay. PVA will burn off. Come on, PVA glue. <laughs> so I'm just gonna draw a rough snowflake shape and then I'm gonna sit these on roughly in the right places. Okay. And what I'm aiming to do is to make sure each of the opposing arms are in line mm -hmm. and that the corners are just about touching. So it's just basically like a star so far. Yeah. And then, yeah, build up. And the then we just add to it. Mm -hmm. And you can add, I, I, I use this basic um, process, a basic pattern, but you can change the pattern. Yeah. And if you look online, there's lots of different varieties that people have done. But this is one I've, it's a fail safe. Um, it's one I teach in my workshops. I've actually got a Christmas decoration workshop this evening. Oh, lovely. <laughs> actually, I did this workshop a couple of years ago mm -hmm. and I did a really lovely red snowflake um, and I gave it as a present and yeah. they were so pleased yeah, with it. Lovely. Yeah, they loved it, yeah. absolutely loved it. They do give make lovely presents. Mm -hmm. So from here, we need to start adding the, I don't know what you call it, the little arms. Yeah. Well, a better yeah. work. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to use a colour for this uh, and we're going to use a sort of thinner piece. I pre cut that. I'm now going to cut it in half. Excellent, worked fine. So that's just over half a centimetre, probably about seven mils. Right. You want it a little bit slimmer than the arms, mm -hmm. but not too tiny, because what happens when glass melts, so you can, if you can compare, 
it, it sort of goes oh, yes. rounded and pulls itself in. When glass mm -hmm. melts, it wants to take itself up ultimately to about six millimetres high. Okay. Um, it, that hasn't gone to six millimetres, but it does pull right in mm -hmm. um, to create that sort of soft effect. So, which one was I going to do? I was going to do that one actually. So we've got the aqua on the inside oh, and then the darker on the outside and we'll put aqua around the ends to give that sort of blobby, blobby sort of effect. So that's the one we're going to aim to do. Um, so what we need are 12 two centimetre pieces for the arms. So I'm just going to try and cut corners by doing it. One, <laughs> two and one, two, three, whoops. This is a pro doing it, I would do it all the time. <laughs> yes, <laughs> if you, this is doing it to save time. I've lost count now. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that's 12 pieces. And little, little pieces, you can just yes. break your hands. So when, when you have scored it, you're sort of opening up the score. And you have to be quite confident, really, yes. with it. Don't yes, you? yes, you yeah. do. I've been doing it for 20 odd, 30 years, <laughs> cutting glass, so. You do get a little bit blasé, which sometimes um, catches you out and you cut yourself. Yes. So there's quite a bit of gluing involved just to hold it in place. What okay. I tend to do is give myself a little reservoir of glue on my mat. Okay. And also a of tweezers are quite useful um, so you don't get covered in glue. Mm -hmm. My hands are already disgustingly covered in something. <laughs> um, so what we're aiming to do is to create an overlap, um, sort of a, an angle there. That's what we're trying to create. So we'll use some glue to hold it in place. What you've got to make sure of is the glass is overlapping the arm. So the coloured glass is overlapping the arm because where you touch glass, glass touches glass, that's where it will fuse together. Okay. So, so a little bit of glue in there. So it's almost like a new height, isn't it? Yes, yes, yeah. yeah. Um, tiny bit of glass, uh, glue on each end and sit it there. So you're going to work your way round and do six of those. Tiny bit of glue. So you make it you make a right angle if you like. Yes. Dip it, drop it. Stick it, dip it, drop it. You've done so many of these. So many of these. <laughs> <laughs> this is the trickiest this, yeah. one to do actually, this yeah. the one with the right angles, because you're trying to join uh, multiple pieces and getting them to overlap. Yeah. So you're just like pinching them in the middle. Pinching them, yeah. Mm. So I'm sort of sticking, pinching that together just to sort of hold it. In place and then a dip, little dip. dip. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the well of glue is really handy. It actually. is really, and that, I've only developed that recently. Yeah. I used to use the squirty, squirty bottle, but, and then the tweezers, they are so useful. Again, it's a tool I've only started using in the past couple of years. Mm -hmm. but they enable you to do little fine adjustments yes. without getting glue all of it. And I've got great sausage fingers. Um, without getting glue everywhere. So as long as that's in contact, yeah. that will be okay. But, but I think the great thing about these is like, you know, they're handmade, so yes. it doesn't have to be like completely perfect right angles. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and people have made them on workshops and they haven't been perfect, but they look fab. They yeah. still look great. And they've been really pleased with what they've made, which is good. Uh, they are a little bit of a fiddle, but they're quite straightforward. Yes. And I think what's so great about these is, you know, you can imagine these on a tree, like with um, yeah. your Christmas lights shining yeah. through. They just add like such a nice Lo depth. And lovely in a window as well. Yeah. Different, different heights in a window, they look mm -hmm. lovely. Yeah. So let's move on to the uh, the outer rim. Again, I've pre-cut some of these, so I need 12, so three, four, five. So this is just Six, the darker blue now with seven, these two eight, centimetre nine. strips. Again, two centimetre strips by about seven mils. Um, and this time they're going to make like a Y shape. Mm -hmm. So just dip the ends in and make a Y shape. Sort Based of on. just above. So we don't want the um, turquoise ones to touch the aqua ones. Right. So we just move them up a little bit. But we do need to leave a little bit of space because at the top of there, um, I need to cut another piece to show you what we're gonna, why we're going to put it at that level. Okay. It looks almost like a W, doesn't it, with the dark blue? You yes, know, it does. Just, they're yeah. just um, the, the tops of the two blue touch, um, but nothing else. This is going to go on the top. So again, I tend to alternate the colours, so it'll be a... The end will be aqua. Mm -hmm. 
then we've got that level turquoise that level aqua and then we'll have some little tiny um turquoise ones to join the arms together I'm just going to pre-cut them in it they're just centimeter squares and they will sit on the end there and it just gives because you've got that double double thickness mm -hmm. it gives what i call a for want of a better word a blobby end yes <laughs> um which i think finishes it off nicely else you get a, a more of a, a a sort of square end, square end. Mm. So, so it just rounds off the ends nicely so let's get the turquoise on i'm trying to be tidy i'm, I'm a bit of a messy worker aren't all creative people though <laughs> <laughs> There. And again, I get them on and then I adjust them. Okay. So I get them in place and then do fine adjusting with the um, the tweezers. The tweezers. It already already looks so much like a snowflake. It yes. looks like a Lego snowflake. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that I've yeah Lego snowflakes. I think I've made a Lego snowflake before <laughs> when my children were younger. Right. So then I adjust them roughly. Yeah. I put them at right angles, but it's only roughly. Yes. Being fiddly and fussy. How far a distance should you leave between the darker blue and the lighter blue? Well, I tend to leave about a centimetre. Okay. About a centimetre. I try and make it even, an even gap between the blob on the end, uh, uh, then the turquoise, okay. then the aqua, and then there'll be a little bit, mm -hmm. a little tiny bit there. So aim for the middle um, of the W to be in the middle of the two, um, but just make sure that it doesn't touch, doesn't touch any yeah. of the lighter blue. Yeah, so you don't want any other colours touching any of the other colours really. And it, a lot of it's done by eye. You just like to think, oh yeah, that needs to come up a bit, that mm. needs to go down a bit. And then the outside pieces, a bit of glue. I mean, if you build them in the kiln, mm -hmm. um, you don't need glue. Yes. But I just, I think it's much easier, certainly for me. Um, to do it on the workbench and then I let it dry and then just pick it up and it's uh nothing moves usually yes and it's fine so what we do need to put in before I do the middle bit is a hook oh yes of course so this wire is called nichrome wire it's um for want of a better, of a better word heat proof mm -hmm. it doesn't dissolve yes I think it's the type of wire they use in elements in in um fires and things so just make a little hook and I, I make different shapes hooks for different um, different decorations. If you see on these, yes, they're circular. Uh, I've got circular ones. They mm -hmm. they work better on the Christmas trees. Okay. But the these hooks work better on the um, snowflakes. And this is just a really tiny little attachment that you then yes. add your ribbon to. So what happens is you have to put that between, type it through, between the layers of glass. Yes. So it fuses together and sort of encapsulates the hook. Again, a bit of adjustment to make it on. Try and make it in the middle and try and make it stand up nice and straight. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and that is in there for good. Yes. They don't come out. It just fuses around the hook and, and holds it there. So only bit left to do now is the middle bit. Um, I'm going to use... Again, a, a bit I've got left over from these pieces, mm -hmm. and I'm just going to cut um, some squares. And they are going to go in the middle. Actually, it's more difficult with your fingers. I use these are called grosing pliers. They're great for gripping and yeah. breaking as well. They look quite like a lot of sort of everyday houses. Yeah, are these things? actually are just are tile cutters. Yes. That, you know, if you're doing some tiling and you're cutting, Great. So the basic tools are a decent cutter, tile cutters, and grosing pliers, okay. and a metal ruler. Um, and you know, you can go from there. Mm -hmm. The expensive bit is the kiln. Yes. <laughs> I've got six. No, not six yet. Okay. But I'm sure, like you know, in most areas, there will, you know, especially with how um, how many people are creative now, you could probably find access to a kiln. Yes. Yeah. And I say to people who come on my courses, if you want to do some at home. You know, I can fire it for you, and obviously mm -hmm. charge you just some kiln time. Yes, of which um, saves people spending a lot of money on a kiln. So. Yeah, and I think it's always good with um, crafts like this to try it out in a workshop oh, setting yes, first. Oh, yes, definitely. Yeah, um, and, and if, if you, you want to go for it, it, you know, buy a kiln and a smaller version. I've got a big one, but mm -hmm. um, if 
a hobby kiln you can get small ones and if you're doing tiny things there's something called a microwave kiln which I've never used before but you can make jewellery in oh, a wow. microwave kiln. I must have a go one day. Mm. <laughs> so last element are the little tiny squares I've put on at a, an angle mm -hmm. sort of diamond rather than square way if you see what I mean yes. to join those arms because if we put that in the kiln now they're not touching and even if they're touching they'll pull away from each other okay but by joining them and creating that bridge it'll sort of lock it all together and fuse mm. it all together plus when once these are fused they look absolutely beautiful yes in the and middle. you get like a little hexagon in the middle mm. it's quite flower like in shape it really. is yeah, yeah definitely it's lovely I'd like to have a go as a, coming away from the Christmas theme, it's like a mandala as well. Mm. I think this would lend itself to some a mandala sort of design. Really lovely for a window, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, definitely mm. a big mandala in a window, I could just imagine it. Mm -hmm. So there we are, there's our our um, snowflake finished and that's what it should look. Oh, something slipped. That's there where the go. tweezers come in yeah. handy, yeah. <laughs> and that's what it should look like when it comes out of the kiln. Thank you so much for watching and stay tuned for some more videos. Thanks. Bye.